SwiftUI has an advanced hit testing algorithm that uses both the frame of a view and often also its contents. For example, if you add a tap gesture to a text view, then all parts of the text view are tappable. You can't somehow tap through the text if you happen to press exactly where a space is. On the other hand, if you attach the same gesture to a circle, then SwiftUI will ignore the transparent parts outside the circle. To demonstrate this, we'll make a circle overlapping a rectangle using a Z stack, both with an on tap gesture modifier. So I'll say here in my view, we have a Z stack with a rectangle filled in the color blue with a fixed frame. I'll do width 300, height 300, then an on tap gesture. So we'll say print rectangle tapped. Then over that, I'll place a circle like this, filled in red with the same frame, width 300, height 300, like that. And this time, the on tap gesture will simply say circle tapped, like that. Now, press Command R, give this thing a quick try. You'll see pressing the circle in the middle, of course, print circle tapped. But I press in this blue area. Still in the circle's frame, but it's transparent there. We're going to get rectangle tapped like so. So, as you can see, SwiftUI does a really good job of realizing this circle's transparent, even though it has the same frame. But it lets us control user interactivity in two useful ways. The first of which is a modifier called allows hit testing. This is attached to a view. And when you do so, with this parameter set to false, the view isn't even considered tappable. That doesn't mean it's inert though. Just so it doesn't catch any tap tap on the screen, things behind the view will get tapped instead. So here we could try adding it to our circle. We could say fill red frame da -da -da, on that gesture, but allows hit testing is false. And now wherever you tap on that circle, it'll print out rectangle tapped. So it ignores the circle. The circle simply refuses to respond to any taps that are happening. The other useful way of controlling user interactivity is with a content shape modifier, which lets us specify the tappable shape for a view. Now, by default, the tappable shape for a circle is a circle of the same size. But we can specify a different shape instead. We could say, for example, I want to have a uh, let's remove this uh, head testing thing and say before tap gesture, we have a content shape of a rect, a rectangle. And where this thing comes in really, really useful is when you actually have tap actions attached to stacks of spaces. Because this effectively changes where it can be tapped. You know, for a circle here, now the whole thing's tappable because it has a rectangular shape for it. So here's a circle, and here in the blue is also a circle. But when you have uh, stacks with spaces, it really matters because SwiftUI won't by default trigger actions when a stack spacer is tapped. We could try it out. We could say, uh, let's get rid of all this code. We have a V stack here with a text hello, then a spacer. I'll give this thing a frame with a height of 100. And then let's say after the spacer, is the text world. I attach a whole V stack tap gesture, that will, um, tap gesture that simply prints out V stack tapped. So wherever we tap inside there, we want to print out V stack tapped. And what you'll find is it isn't quite how it works. If I tap in this white area at the top, nothing happens. Tap on hello, we get V stack tapped. Tap on world, V stack tapped. Tap in the space in the middle, nothing at all. So only these exact areas where the text happens to be around here and around here triggers the area. However, if we use content shape rectangle on our V stack, then the whole area for the stack becomes tappable, including its spacer. So we can say here, before on tap gesture, we have a content shape, content shape of dot rect. Make the whole area rectangularly tappable, now we'll get taps here and world and in between as well.